Feeling good? I mean, you feel no. it? No. Okay, we're rolling. So are you... Oh, okay, we're rolling. Yeah, I'll <laughs> tell you in a sec. <laughs> we're rolling. This uh, is a new YouTube. What's the date today? February... 23rd. 23rd, 2011. And I've been promising you guys a interview. I want everyone out there getting checked because it's not just junkies that get this disease. Please, please understand that. So anyway, this is Daryl. I would like to introduce Daryl to you today. And we're just going to ask him some questions and see how it goes. So, do you want to introduce yourself and tell everyone how you got the disease? Let's start with that. Well, my name is Daryl Hermanes. <laughs> <laughs> See, he doesn't mind losing his career over this. <laughs> no, no, I have nothing to hide. Oh my gosh, there's the phone again. <laughs> are we going to ignore it? Yeah. All yeah. right. Uh, no, my name is Daryl Luster and I'm 56 years old. And let's see, I, I started feeling sick almost three years ago. And by sick, I, I mean I was feeling fatigue, um, almost like chronic fatigue for, for a period of months. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then that summer, I um, had a severe attack of pain in my abdomen, right across my lower abdomen and uh, was admitted to emergency and underwent uh, uh, a lot of tests, including a CAT scan and much blood work, and they couldn't determine what was wrong with me. Right. So, and then nausea had started by then. I had severe nausea for forever, it seemed like, for a year or more, year and a half. And, uh, and it would, it would back off at times, but it was generally pretty awful. And uh, so, uh, so in any case, then uh, I was having a hernia repair surgery done, and in the pre-screening for that surgery, the anesthesiologist noticed that my um, ferritin levels were quite high. And what is that? That's the iron. The iron counts. Blood okay. iron, yeah. And uh, that sort of piqued his interest and, and started looking at why, and one of the causes can be uh, a condition called hemochromatosis, and, um, and of course, HCV, hep C, as well. And so, and then they discovered also at that time that my uh, liver enzymes were elevated quite high. By quite high, I mean they were, you know, 100 and change. Just getting up there right. when normal's in the 30s, you know, that sort of thing, 30s and 40s. So anyways, so they did a test for hep C. For and how long ago antibody. was that? That was uh, 2009, uh, August of 2009. Right. Yeah. And so in the, the first test, which is for the antibody, it showed up as positive, but they do a further test to determine if you actually have hep That's C. That's right, yeah. yeah. You can have the antibody but not actually have the virus active. Yeah. So. so if your iron and, and your, your um, liver enzyme counts are elevated, that's usually what triggers them to do the test. And that was the same in my case was too. It? That was what triggered mm. my doctor to go further. Even though I had asked him to run me for everything under the sun. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and I thought Even they had at that. They hadn't done that separate test that they they you know should do because not always are your liver enzymes high when you have hepatitis C. Well, that's true too. There can so, be other causes and right and that sort of thing. Or, or, or you your can enzymes have it and can they can normal. be normal. They that's can right. be normal and you can have Hep C. So then, in in that case, it wouldn't be found out. So you need to specifically tell them to do this hepatitis C test. There's no again. cookie cutter approach. Yeah. Everyone should be tested. Everybody Everyone. should be tested. Yeah. If you've been to the dentist, you should be tested. You're at risk. Tattoos, piercings, anything like that.
Okay, so that's about the time that you got uh, diagnosed. Yeah. And then they put you on treatment. And you well, that didn't happen right away. One thing about having it takes Hep C a while. is you wait and wait and wait and wait some more. Yeah, seven months so. between the doctor and my, my uh, gastroenterologist. Really? Yeah. Ooh. I didn't wait that long. Yeah. So they got me in pretty quickly. I had a high viral load. That's something they tested for. And I was uh, referred to a very good doctor who's involved in, in a lot of research. Right. Into hep C, new hep C treatments. And You're fortunately, lucky. yeah, fortunately for me, I was asked because he, he thought I was a good candidate mm -hmm. uh, to be part of a clinical trial for a new drug which would mean there would be 50% control, meaning placebo, and 50% the real drug. Okay, so what he was given and has explained to me is he was put on this trial treatment where it could be placebo or not. So it was the interferon and the ribavirin, which is the same as I got, and most of you are getting standard of care. Any, the standard of care, plus it had a third ingredient thrown in. Which, which was a polymerase inhibitor. There you go. A polymerase inhibitor. And that's the most, that's sort of the next generation after the protease inhibitors, which mm -hmm. are about to be approved this year. Okay. So he was on that, you were on that, Daryl, for 24 weeks? The placebo or the, yeah. Right. The, the treatment duration was 48 weeks. In, 48 in total. weeks. Yeah. Okay. So what they did is. 24 weeks into the program, they changed something, correct? They just removed those pills. They removed the pills. Whether they were sugar be pills placebo. or... Okay. Yeah. Okay. So how did you feel the first six months? Well, you know, the first uh, six months were pretty rough. <laughs> okay, let's go back. We forgot to tell them how you contracted the disease, or do you know how you contracted the Well, the, the only thing... I was never a, 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 a big drug user. I used some recreational drugs um, when I was young and foolish. Have you ever used a and needle? No, I was not a needle user. Okay. No. But uh, in any case, uh, I, uh, because I was diagnosed in the biopsy as only having stage zero to one damage to my liver, which means that the liver was not virtually undamaged. Mm -hmm. It leads me to believe that I didn't have it for 30 years because I think my liver would have been in far worse shape. They can tell you about yeah. how long you've had it. Mm -hmm. But in any case, so I think I got it in China when I was working there. I had some dental work done and ah. they didn't have an autoclave. They just used alcohol yep. to sterilize. You're uh, the second yeah. person. There's another fellow that uh, I asked if he would let me interview him. Same thing. He spent 10 years in China and knows that's where he got it. Same thing, dental surgery. So when you go to these other countries, they don't have the same policies as we do too for the, how sterile and what equipment they're using. A lot of them are reusing needles for goodness yes. sakes. So My niece was infected you know, in Venezuela yeah. by a reused needle. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and medical, also tattoos, yeah. piercings yeah. in other countries. Anything, any, any, any blood to blood contact. I mean, hello, right? Yeah. So pe these are things, vaccinations in other countries. Yeah, these are that's things right. that people don't think about. So you were, did were you really sick the first while? When I was in going to, your other phone. <laughs> going back to everybody wants me today. <laughs> going back to uh, to China, actually. Uh, a while after uh, I had the dental work done, because mm -hmm. I was working there over a period of a year and a half, right. I came down with what I thought was the worst flu that I ever had in my life. But in hindsight, I'm pretty sure I had acute hepatitis. My body was fighting it. I probably almost beat it, and mm -hmm. that's you know that that's my feeling. But I just I just didn't have enough. Uh, my immune system was weak and. Right. And, 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 you know, because 15% of the population that are exposed to the, to the virus will have the antibody, but they never develop Hep C. Yeah, some people, yeah. Uh, um, it just clears, 
in and naturally, of itself. Their, their body it's naturally within yeah. a, uh, I think it's just a couple weeks of yeah. contracting the virus, yeah. your body can just dismiss it. So it either does or it doesn't. And, Not um, something to count on. No. Get tested. Get tested. <laughs> Everybody uh, in the whole world. <laughs> we're begging. And Daryl's going to help me advocate too. Yes. And uh, I made a promise to myself not long after diagnosis. And <laughs> there goes the phone again. Somebody wants some bad. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. and how long have you been off treatment now? Well, I stopped the uh, Pegasus, which is the interferon, um, two weeks ago today. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, sorry. And I stopped the Ribavarin a week ago today. Mm -hmm. I finished. So the official end of treatment date was a week ago today. But he had a cold at the end of treatment. Yeah, so. <laughs> which I still have. <laughs> yeah, kind of depleted the uh, anticipation of, of the end of treatment, he told me. I want to know how it affected you. You were quite sick, and I, I know that you told me that you worked for most of the time, though. Mm. But it really did. Even when you were working, it must have affected your business. Did oh. it? You were. Daryl's lucky enough to be self-employed. Not all of us are. And uh, how did it affect your life and your work? Oh, in in, in very profound ways, and not all negative. Mm hmm. You know, I've taken some positive things out of this whole journey experience. Um, I've learned, uh, I've learned uh, again, what's uh, most important in life, and that's a positive thing. I've learned some things about myself, which I think were positive, but there, there was a lot of pain and suffering, and mental pain. The treatment it, it can be for for most people, I think very difficult on you um, in, in, uh, in so many ways, not the least of which is, is many people are prone to suffer with clinical depression because of what the chemical treatments do to your, your own brain chemistry. I fought taking antidepressants for the first three months and I was a basket case and finally I had to, uh, to give in because I had thoughts of suicide, suicidal thoughts. I felt that bad, and this wasn't my character at all. I've always been very positive, self-employed almost my entire adult life. Things didn't happen if I didn't make them happen, and you know, depressed people don't usually. Well, I've never been depressed. <laughs> I went through the same thing, <laughs> and, 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 and it saved me. The antidepressants, you know, saved I had too. no side effects from the particular one yeah. that I used, which was a generic Celexa. And, uh, and I, from what I know through my work through advocacy work and, and support forums is that most people tolerate it pretty well. Yeah. It's and I, for one, like I'm so against antidepressants me too, and, and so. using them, but I'm telling you, if you do do the treatment, yes. don't fight it like we did because you will lose. Like yeah. you, you can't control what this stuff does to your head. You, you, it's going to happen. We're not trying to scare anyone. <laughs> We're not trying to scare anybody, but it's going to happen. You know, yeah. I just had an email. Recently, I talked to a woman whose husband is on it, and she was going to take him off because she couldn't handle it. <laughs> and she asked me what the repercussions were, but, you know, at least in this For him country, or for her? Yeah. <laughs> My wife is... Has, you know, deserves some kind of medal award. <laughs> yes. She's you, been there for me all the way, and so so have many other people, including Petra. So you've been Petra. very lucky. <laughs> you've been very lucky in that regard. And yes. again, you know, if you're going to go through treatment, make sure you do have the support. And in the case of this wife, you know, I told her he's not going to have another chance to do the treatment again. If you take him off, it may not work the second time. That's right. Or it may have worked the first time. And if it's that bad, you know, ask somebody to spell you off and get out of the house for yeah. a while. And maybe do that, you know, a couple times a week or, or whatever and give give your partner that break. Or caregiver. whoever your caregiver yeah. is. Give them that break too. No, that's because, good, good well, advice. One thing that, that, that I found was my wife, um, she, she didn't want to leave me alone because she was afraid for me. Yeah. 
And I kept telling her that, of course, I can't go out and have much fun. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was it. You know, I'd, I'd work and I'd come home and I'd sleep. Yeah. And that was pretty much all I could manage. And I didn't work full days. I mean, being self-employed, I was able to work in the evening if I had time as well. But in any case, uh, that's what I did. And, and I just told my wife, look, you need to get out. Yeah. Go do things. You had to take have care fun. of yourself as yeah. well as the caregiver. You have to wasn't... look after your own health and yeah. your own mind. And it was difficult for her to, yeah. to let go yeah. of that. And, and, and very difficult for her because she cares about me. Yeah. You know? She was scared yeah. for you. She was scared. Yeah. Absolutely. What about the stigma? How has that affected you or your life or has it? You know... It may now. It... it uh, <laughs> <laughs> Everyone who I'm interviewing is a brave soul because it is hard to lay yourself bare when, when there is such a stigma involved. Yeah, well, the stigma is something that, that, that I came up against almost from the very beginning, but mm -hmm. it certainly wasn't from any of the healthcare people here uh, where we live. Uh, in fact, I have to say that I, I haven't encountered any of that sort of thing at all in, in my, from health in my care and treatment. I have encountered uh, mostly ignorance is what I've encountered and I don't mean ignorance, I mean it in, in liberal sense where people just don't know and, I, and I've tried to educate people uh, without you know overdoing it and hitting them over the head with it but um, just so, so that people learn and I mean people in my day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. And I haven't held back. I, I've t told, I think, all of my clients and I, you know, my suppliers, my workers. I Have you? Told, oh, yeah. That's no. pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, How did everybody they, in my family on knows. The on the whole, very well. Uh, one thing I did find, and I think this has more to do with any time that a person, an individual, is diagnosed with what is perhaps a life-threatening disease, and that would include many diseases or, you know, conditions mm -hmm. like HIV or HCV or cancer or, you know, many things. Um, your friends sometimes don't know what to say, and, uh, and, and it becomes awkward for them because, you know, what do you say? Well, I hope you feel better. And, you know, in treatment, you get sort of sick and tired of people asking, so how do you feel? Bad question. Bad question to ask somebody in treatment. You always feel really awful in treatment. <laughs> and another one. But you look good. Yes, you look good. And, you know, I always... I hated that one. <laughs> I always looked good. Yeah. You know, it's like, exactly how what's with that? Help it. <laughs> well, not for, you know, there were times when I was sort of gray, and my hair was like straw and very thin. <laughs> yeah. you didn't and I remember you in treatment, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. We both look pretty bad. Looking pretty grim. We go to the same support group. This is how I met Daryl, is, uh, our support group. Oh, uh, we were a pair, weren't we? We were a pair when we first met, yeah. We were, too. Oh, that yeah. was fun. Poor Joan. Poor Joan. <laughs> My partner in the... Yeah. I'm not sure if she gets it now or <laughs> ever will. But we do have fun in the support group. So if anybody ever wants to come, we do have fun there, don't we? There's some fun to be yeah. had. You know, I've, I've made some, some, some wonderful friends through uh, this... You know, some people are going to say, what are you talking Tell about? Tell them about <laughs> your online support group oh, in case I, they want to join you. Yeah, I, uh, I've i been working for the last, well, more than a year, year and a couple months, I guess, with some on-site uh, forums, support forums. And, are there any uh, good ones you can suggest? Yeah, there, there, there's uh, one called Janice and Friends, and um, there, there are a range of them. If you go to the Delphi I don't know if you, if any of you are familiar. D L P H I. Yeah, they they host a number of different um, uh, forums, hundreds I think. Okay. And there you if go. you're looking to um, to find a forum for hepatitis C, it's a good place to start, and and then you just have to kind of find the group that seems to work for you. Yeah. Some are very very uh, cliquish, and. Uh, 
No, you gotta you find know. the one that works. You gotta some find the one that works. Some don't. Some have a lot of fun, and, and, and one I'm in, we have a lot of fun, and we, we tell stories, and, and um, there's a lot of musicians and, and different people involved in it, and we share music. And, That's nice. Yeah, so I've made some very hard and fast friends that I never had. Have you lost here. a lot of friends? I, I lost some friends. I've lost some friends, uh, and mostly that has to do with the fact that they kind of deserted me, I thought. Yes, me too. And, and it hurt me. It does. Yeah. It hurts. Yeah. But you guys, we're going to have to wrap it up. And, um... Great. Petra. Thank you. Thank you very much for the interview. I appreciate it. Thank you, Petra. You get tested. <laughs> get tested. And next time I come back, I'm going to tell you about a new campaign that I, I hope to get the courage to get involved in. And maybe you guys can kick my butt on it but I want to talk to you about it, let you know about it. Um, any questions, concerns, you need help, you can contact me at petrabilities at aol.com. Have a look at my new artwork at petrabilities.com. Oh, no, my email is petrabilities at aol.com. My website's petrabilities.com. Have a great day. Thanks for listening, guys. Good luck. See you, Daryl. <laughs>